Aloha, my name is Raul Noheo Goodness. I'm a Kanaka Moali, native Hawaiian, grew up on Maui, uh, and now I live in Brooklyn, New York. Today I'm here to talk to you about what is Na'iaupuni. Now this is a question that came to me really in the past few months as well, because up until then I wasn't really uh, uh, up to date on all the actions that were happening uh, regarding uh, nation building for Hawaiians. Um, but I had to get up to speed real fast uh, since uh, August 3rd when uh, the first election notice was sent out. So what I want to do today is to share some of the things that I've learned in that time period uh, and hopefully to in by doing so to help inform the rest of Hawaiians that are trying to figure out this process really quickly. Okay, so First, we got the state of the Hawaii. Um, the state of Hawaii really kicked off this process uh, in 2011 when Act 195 was uh, signed into law by Abercrombie. That's what created the Native Hawaiian Royal Commission, uh, otherwise known as Kanai Oluwalu. So this is the uh, list which was intended to register Hawaiians uh, in order to uh, be involved in nation building. So this became somewhat controversial because of the, uh, the requirements needed to sign on to the list. Not all Hawaiians could agree to that for certain reasons. Uh, and also this came uh, after uh, all the, the controversial Kaka bill. Um, uh, it's seen as uh, the, as another way for to have a state of Hawaii-led process to get federal recognition um, for a Hawaiian governing entity because uh, the Kaka bill failed through the federal system. So this is a little bit different. Uh, because now, why would the state of Hawaii be involved in this process? Um, one of the main reasons has to do with uh, the uh, so-called ceded lands, which um, uh, after the 1893 overthrow um, of the Kingdom of Hawaii, um, sh uh, shortly after the uh, what was the illegal government, the Republic of Hawaii, um, entered into um, basically you know, said that all the lands that were held by the government and the, the crown lands were to be ceded to the U.S. federal government. Um, uh, however, those lands are still considered, um, uh, out of the Statehood Act, those lands were considered to be in the land trust um, for the interest of Native Hawaiians. So basically, the state of Hawaii doesn't have the ability uh, although they control the land trust and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands as well, um, they don't really have full control because it's not uh, the claims um, on those lands are not settled. So, um, uh, how can they be settled? It's not possible to settle with Native Hawaiians um, unless there is a, a government representing Native Hawaiians which uh, has the standing to make a deal, okay? So the only way that uh, that can be settled is through the creation of a governing entity. Um, so that's where Na'ya Puni comes in. So there had to be uh, an independent uh, process created, independent of the state of the Hawaii or the federal government, um, because if uh, it was just the state of Hawaii acting that is clearly not legitimate uh, in the courts. So, or, or really like in, in terms of people's understanding anyway. So, what had to happen is there had to be a separate corporation uh, called Na'iapuni created. And uh, this is the way they did it. Uh, so, it's really, it was controlled by the state of Hawaii, uh, but technically it's independent. So what they're using is, um, and it's using the Kanai Olawalu list as the voter list. 
Okay. So um, that's a big issue because there's a lot of controversy in that because so many uh, Hawaiians didn't uh, either uh, didn't want to sign up or actively remove themselves from that list because uh, you know why would you do that? Why would you decide not to vote if you're Hawaiian in a governing entity? And the reason is is because this state-driven process has a had a specific outcome in mind. Okay, theoretically there could be multiple outcomes, but really the intention uh, is to get federal recognition. So, what's federal recognition? Federal recognition uh, is by the U.S. federal government. There's a Department of Interior within the U.S. federal government. Um, some people call it the DOI, Department of Interior. That's a department that is, uh, uh, it manages sort of everything in the internal, um, like either federal lands in the United States. Uh, it's also responsible for the um, uh, native Indian tribes. So this department has authority over um, you know, the federally recognized Indian tribes as well as the uh, uh, Alaskan native tribes. Um, it also has um, uh, part of its concerns has to do with the uh, Hawaiian Homestead Act. So what federal recognition is, is that if, um, if a department, excuse me, um, if a governing entity is created, so a governing entity is created, uh, that entity, if it conforms to the terms of the Department of Interior, it could be granted, if it requests it, it could be granted federal recognition, okay? So basically, you know, they have, a, basically they have, uh, if it conforms with the rules, uh, that an entity could be federally recognized. Now, how do we get there? So if there's federal recognition, um, uh, Native Hawaiians would be similar to like, tribals, like a tribal government, um, and all the authority would be under Department of the Interior. Uh, and Congress would also have full control over that entity. So basically, this is seen as um, legalizing uh, the... Um, uh, what was still what is still outstanding, which is the fact that the um, the U.S. was involved in uh, illegally overthrowing um, the Hawaiian Kingdom, and uh, if if this happens, then it's sort of you know it's legalized. So there would have to be an interest um, for you know for us Hawaiians, we have to have an interest in doing this. So that's a big question. So the state um, wants this because. If that entity is recognized, and it's also has uh, uh, most Hawaiians are you know it basically uh, is legitimate. Um, that entity could then make a deal um, on the on issues surrounding the land trust. So the idea is the state of Hawaii would then get control of a bunch of these lands. Um, and uh, you know, could buy and sell lands, do trade, do all kind of st development that it doesn't have the ability to do now. So let's come back to Naiyapuni. So basically, the idea with Naiyapuni is that um, there's basically first uh, the plan is to make uh, AHA, um, otherwise known as a constitutional convention. So the idea is that delegates will be elected to go to this AHA. There will be 40 delegates. So, you know, from all, you know, the different islands and from the continent. So, if they're going to meet 40 working days early next year, they could, could create a governing document 
which is to create a governing entity. It's sort of like, you know, you don't have to exactly call it a nation, but it's, it's kind of unclear what it is, but it's, uh, the basic term is a governing entity. So there's a big question about what that would be. Um, so what could happen? What could happen is that option one, you could have a governing entity that is ready, it's basically the rules are set up so that it's ready to request federal recognition from the Department of Interior. If that request is granted and it conforms, federal recognition is over. So um, there's one major issue with getting federal recognition, however. Uh, most people understand that, not all, but most people understand if you ask for federal recognition um, and you're granted it, then you're surrendering all claims for um, reinstituting independent nation of Hawaii on the level of, on the international level, okay? So if we do FEDRAC, we're giving up our claims for independent nation. So let's, let's talk about that possibility as well. So another possibility is that there could be a governing entity created which would um, instead of being ready for federal recognition, um, either, you know, it could be, it could preserve the idea of like a independent nation state. So this, a lot of people think, okay, well this is like very difficult to achieve under the current circumstance, but uh, there are, there, there is a basis for it, so we can get into that um, at a later time, but let's just call this, um, independent nation state. So if Hawaiians want to go this way, we would have to, we can't do it right away. So there would have to, this governing entity would have to be some kind of provisional government, you know, over, you know, 15, 20 years, um, there could be a transition to independent nation state. Now, this is why this is a major reason why Hawaiians are divided over this because um, some people have an opinion. Okay, we should go straight for federal recognition, and then guide this whole process with only that as a focus. All right. Um, others think we should. Um, uh, go for independent nation state and go directly to that purpose. Meanwhile, there is actually no Hawaiian government. So um, everybody's locked into their own opinions, but we don't have a process for this. So uh, Naya Puni has a lot of problems with this process, okay? But there's a possibility that delegates, it's really up, up to whatever delegates that get in there. Um, so the delegates are going to decide on recommending a, a, a constitution. Now what's going to happen is that the first, so the first vote um, from Hawaiians is you vote um, for delegates to the AHA. If those delegates come up with a governing document, there would be a second vote to, this is basically like a, a referendum. So you're going to vote yes or no. So that second vote would happen a couple months after the AHA is fit out, basically. So this second vote has a lot of importance because uh, it matters, depending on how many people vote in the second vote to, to say up or down on the Constitution, uh, the Department of Interior will consider whether there is broad-based support for this governing entity from Hawaiians. 
So um, they actually said, um, in, uh, a couple weeks ago, they released their uh, proposed rules for federal recognition, um, which uh, I can get into at, in a later um, talk. Uh, but basically, in those proposed rules, they say if between 30,000 to 50,000 Hawaiians vote yes in a referendum for a government, then the DOI will consider that entity to have the legitimacy to request federal recognition and they'll approve it. So that's a big deal. So everybody should know this. Um, I highly recommend um, anyone read the proposed rules from the Department of Interior on this issue because it spells out not only um, uh, how they would grant federal recognition or not to a governing entity, but even more importantly, they state what will and will not change when federal recognition is granted. So, but real briefly, I'm going to go through it. Um, what the U.S. Um, Department of Interior says is that if Hawaiian government is recognized, uh, no federal lands will change hands. That means um, uh, Hawaiian, you know, Hawaiian government doesn't get any lands from the land trust. No Hawaiian homelands will change. Um, that also doesn't change. So um, there, there would need to be a, like a new laws passed basically for, for that to change. Uh, also, uh, the uh, I think basically the only thing that we get is um, uh, kaho'olawe because the state of Hawaii already uh, agreed to transfer that to a governing entity. So we don't really get a lot, um, almost nothing. Uh, and the thing that we give up is we give up the uh, uh, our claim for national sovereignty, which is basically, if we go here, it's almost impossible to then go, you know, either uh, reestablish uh, our national sovereignty, or uh, and which is also the way for anyone that wants to reinstate the kingdom, uh, you have to go through this process as well. So don't don't. You can't really go for federal rec recognition and then try to get an independent nation state unless you feel that, you know, the United States of America is going to break apart, you know, at some point in the near future. So, <coughs> that's a lot of information. So, you might be wondering, well, what can I do about this if I'm Hawaiian? So, basically, one option is to vote delegates that agree with your opinion or you know after of course inform yourself first actually the first thing you need to do is find out a lot more information about this in a very short time period unfortunately the Nayapuni process is incredibly fast it's only taking the whole thing is taking place over a few months and the delegates are supposed to write a constitution in 40 days. It's virtually impossible. You know, most, most nations take years to do this. You have to have, you know, all the heads of the political entities, the different groups, they need to come together, they need to um, put in protections for, for citizens, they need to understand how to do power sharing, democratic process. It's virtually impossible, but that's what we're tasked with. So, anyway. Uh, first thing is to get to talk about it, get informed. Second thing, um, identify delegates that you can support and vote for those delegates uh, in November. The voting is going to take place uh, between November 1st and November 30th. So, uh, vote, vote, if, you, if you find someone that you can agree with, vote, vote them in. 
Uh, however, don't. Uh, let's say you can vote for. Let's say you're on the mainland and you can vote for seven delegates. If you can only find three delegates that you can agree with, don't don't vote for seven. Just vote for those three. If you can find seven, vote for all the seven. But uh, don't vote people in just because you need to fill out your card. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, get ready to vote on whatever the referendum comes out in the pos you know, in the affirmative or in the negative. Uh, number three, and plenty Kanaka out there, I know. Um, they have so many suspicions about this process that they're just saying, take me off the list. I want to disenroll. I'm not going to in be involved at all in this process. If that's you, go for it. You know, you know, no one's, no one's going to make you do it. But what you can do in that case, there's at least two things you can do. Number one, uh, if, you, if you take your name off the list, you can protest this uh, this whole process. Number two, you can please sign up for a petition to be counted. There is a protest now Yapuni petition, which says you don't agree. Um, I did not give my consent to this process. This is not a grassroots process. This is driven by the state of Hawaii. It's illegitimate. Please sign this petition. Uh, protest not Yapuni. There's other ones that say um, it's almost like the Kuwait petition, 2015. If you disagree, you disagree, sign those petitions. Uh, this is a critical way to be counted um, if you're not going to vote in this process. Okay. Also, uh, if you're going to sign up for these petitions, that the, uh, certain groups that are running these, uh, you can sign up for their mailing list and to find out. Um, if there's a way in the future to create an independent um, voter list. So this, I don't think there's a, there's one with a lot of traction yet, but this is a possible thing in the near future that either if the Nahiopuni process doesn't work out, um, there, there could be a, a, another AHA to create a governing entity which is, comes about through an independent process. And this is where independent voter lists will come in. So theoretically, or even, you know, there could even be a possibility, a small possibility that at the, the Na'iaupuni AHA, that the delegates create a process for not just recognizing the Kanai Oluwalu list for voting, but can also recognize an independent voter list as well, to, because although this is a straight state-driven process, it's really up to the delegates to create whatever they um, decide, because they're the ones that were voted in by Hawaiians. You know, state of Hawaii wasn't voted in um, by Lahui, basically, um, and even Oha. Uh, uh, all state of Hawaii residents can vote for OHA delegates now. It's not just um, Hawaiians. So really, this is Nayapuni with all its flaws is an option, you know, to create a Hawaiian governing entity. However, it may not have the authority, may or may not have the authority to make permanent deals like on the land trust or federal recognition. So a lot of information here. I just wanted to share my mana'o about because you know, I you know I've done a lot of catching up here. You know, I'm uh, decided to participate in this process uh, be, uh, partially because of the limited options available. Uh, I want more options available. So um, a lot more to come. I hope to do more future videos as well and um, uh, post any notes with this. So, anyway, mahalo for your time. Oh, yo.